Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bowo. It is March 17th, and it is 9.03. Just a titch late, but we are in it, and we're ready to go. I hope you guys are working out or um, at work, getting ready, or on in the car, whatever you're doing, um, you know, doing the dishes. Man, we, I hope you're checking out the Devos um, uh, every day. And uh, every weekday, that is, we're going through the Bible, and we're in Second Corinthians chapter 11. That's easy for me to say, right? Part two, and I want to read some, a little a little poem to you guys. And it says, this is called Joey, and I found this super cute. It says, Joey, Joey took a stone and knocked down the sun, and whoosh, it swizzled down so hard and Bloop! It bounced in his backyard, and glunk, it landed on his toe, and the world was dark, and the corn wouldn't grow, and the wind wouldn't blow, and the cock wouldn't crow, and it always was night, 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 all because of a stone and Joe. And it's got a cute little picture of Joey uh, reaching out for the sun. And I thought, man, that is a cool little poem, a cute little poem on overconfidence, right? And that's how we ended our last uh, Devo, was how the Corinthians were listening to these false teachers that were super boastful, just as Joey thought he could knock down the sun out of the sky. So these uh, false teachers in Corinthians, in the in the Corinth church, thought that they could, you know, they they were the greatest and they spoke well. They looked well when they spoke. You know, hey mom, good morning. And they they had this, you know, they had the right attire on and they just looked the part and and they taught with such discipline and such a sternness, you know, of uh that it just man, it moved people. And the Corinthian church was moved by that. And Paul says, hey, if we're going to boast in anything, let's boast in the Lord. And Paul is wanting to win the Corinthian church to the gospel of Jesus Christ, saved by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast that we are part of the new covenant under Jesus Christ. All this. And so hopefully in our lives, we learn to take time with people that we love. We have friends, family members that don't believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I think we could take something from Paul in these areas where he's taking time to express his heart to them, his love for them. And he does it in an interesting way in this section. And he uses satire and he uses a little bit of sarcasm, doesn't he? Now, satire, just so you know, is an artistic form. It's a literary, uh, chiefly literary and dramatic in which human or individual vices um, are held up to censure by means of ridicule um, 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 you know, it, it, what I'm saying is that it's a form of writing that Paul is using here. It's a dramatic way of writing to to hold up something of ridicule, right? To hold up something of a folly. And so Paul uses this expression. Now, Jesus, as I mentioned, used hyperbole a lot. He, you know, talked a lot about you know, things in extreme ways, right? I am the door. I am the light. Now, Jesus ain't a door and he ain't the light. But, you know, and, and I guess I get another thing this morning from the Devo too, is that, you know, we should really, um, just as Paul used and Jesus used uh, literary artistic forms, so we can too. And sometimes to get a point over, uh, are across, we need to use a hyperbole or to be sarcastic. Now, of course, we can be overly sarcastic, and that might be um, kind of the fault of our generation. 
is that we tend to be overly sarcastic in everything. Everything's a satire. And that's not good either. And we see in Paul's writing that when he needed to and when Jesus needed to, then they used these literary forms to be able to help people understand something. And what he's trying to get the Corinthian church to understand is the ridiculousness of the people that they're listening to, the false teachers. And Paul's going to get into that a little more, so we're going to understand a little more of the false teachers as we go on in this chapter. So he's using satire. And uh, these Corinthians, just like Joey, they're think they can, you know, they think themselves too much, right? Like Joey thought he could knock down the sun, right? With a with a rock or with a pebble. So we tend to boast so much in ourselves, we tend to think that we can do all that. And uh, I know I don't read a lot of Blaise Pascal in this Devo, but this is a good one. It says, uh, for what, have man, what has mankind been able to do except either exalt themselves through their inner feelings, which they retain of their past greatness, right? So what is what is the boasting of our world? What do we boast in, right? The idea we have, we have incredible pride in our past greatness, things that we've done in our life, right, that have been good, right? We tend to exalt those things. Or, on the other hand, we debase ourselves, at the sight of our present weakness, right? Or we do that, or we debase ourselves. We beat ourselves up over our lack, our present lack or our present weakness. So mankind constantly is in flux of this pride issue that we got and this depression issue that we have. And um, so, yeah. So boasting in us, hey, we don't want to boast in us, right? Uh, we don't have want to have this incredible, excessive pride. So Paul says, here we go. And uh, he talks about the church so beautifully, right? You guys are like a chaste version. I brought you to Jesus Christ right there. You know, you as a bride going to the bridegroom. But yet just as Eve was tempted and fell away through lies, lies of who? Lies of Satan, right? Who appears as an angel of light. Very interesting, too, angel of light. There's maybe some Bible study there um, to do. Not maybe, right? There certainly is. Um, but, uh, you know, so we can go in directions. So the Corinthian church was listening to people that looked the part, felt the part, all those things, but yet the gospel was wrong. So Paul goes on and he says, Again, I say, don't think that I am a fool to talk like this. Remember, he's using this kind of satire. He, but even if you do listen to me, or he, he says, even if you do give me this place to, to share, right? Listen to me as you would to a foolish person while I also boast a little bit. <laughs> Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I am acting like a fool. And since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. After all, you think you are so wise, but you enjoy putting up with fools. You put up with it even when someone enslaves you, takes everything you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything, and slaps you in the face. How many people want other human beings to take control of them? to have more control over them? That is a political question in our day, is it not? How many of us want to be enslaved? How many of us want to have everything we have taken from us? How many of us want to have people take advantage of you or take control of everything or even slaps you in the face, right? Shames you. Ooh, that is a Devo uh, that I will leave in the hands of my friends, Scott, Peter, and Sean on A Reason for Hope, and you could talk to them about that. <laughs> but for us, you know, 
why do we want to go to things that are going to enslave us when the gospel frees us from our pride, right? What it does is it, it takes our pride and it shows us perfect justice in the cross. So it humbles us. And then it also takes our depression and the cross by looking at it exalts us to new heights. Why would we want to trade that kind of freedom? The, the greatest uh, regulator in us as human beings is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why would we want to take that kind of freedom and give that over to another human author- authority that is ar- st- bound by all that pride and all that depression and everything in between? Why would we want to give someone that kind of authority over us? But this is what the Corinthians were doing. And Paul says, hey, you know, hey, boasting ain't good, but since you like boasting so much, and since you love folly, right, you love this kind of listening to folliness, hey, let me be a little bit of the the folly teacher here, and maybe you'll listen, you know, because you tend to listen to people who are, uh, you know, boasting in such a form, right? So, hey, let me be a little, uh, a little like that right now, a little foolish, he says. So you can see, man, this guy, Paul, is really using this artistic expression to to get through to the Corinthian church. But whatever they dare to boast about, meaning those false teachers, I'm talking like a fool again. And I dare to boast about it too. (laughs) Uh, So Paul says, man, I'm, I'm talking like a nut. And I dare to boast about being a nut. Because this is what you guys are enjoying. This is what you like. This is who you like to be around. Are they Hebrews? Meaning, are those people that are talking to you, are they Hebrews? So am I. So the answer is yes. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman but I have served him far more. Meaning Jesus Christ. These guys are Israelites. These guys are Hebrews. These guys say they serve Jesus. Well, I have served Jesus more. Now Paul's going to get into his boast. A statement that is supposed to um, express excessive pride in oneself, right? So when we think of someone on the playground who's being prideful, we usually don't like it because they're making every shot. They're thinking they're everything. You know, they're like, man, I'm awesome. You know, give me the rock. And they they shoot the ball and, you know, swish, man. They're like, yeah, money, you know. And you're like, you know, can this guy stop? You know, but he just keeps going and going and going. Well, Paul's now going to make his boast. You know, his big prideful boast to the Corinthians. You guys listen to people that boast? Well, hey, maybe you'll listen to me too. You know, since I love you, since what I'm giving you is free. And, uh, you know, and I guess that's a problem because, you know, I should be a pastor that burdens you financially because that's what they're doing and you think they're awesome. So maybe I need to be a a real heavy-handed minister that just burdens you guys all the time financially. And maybe then you'll love me. So Paul's going to say, here we go. I'm going to share my boast to you guys, right? For I know I sound like a madman, but I have served Jesus more. I have worked harder. I have been in prison more often. I have been whipped times without number and faced death again and again, five different times. The Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Man, what an amazing boast. And he doesn't mean stoned as in the way we think, you know, when you listen to a lot of heavy metal music back in 1980. Not that kind of stoned, right? He's talking about throwing rocks. And then he says, three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea, I have traveled on many long journeys. Let me boast some more. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, 
the Jews, as well as from Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers and are not. If there were people on Mars, Paul might include them at this point in his boasting. You know, even people from Mars came after me. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I repeat that because people who claim to be believers and are not. So sad, right? Maybe maybe there's a little hint, hint there to the Corinthians. Uh, a hint, hint. They claim to be believers, but what do they believe? He says, I have worked hard and long. I have, I'm like a, a, a guy who's a person who's working in the fields day and night. I'm not the person who looks like they got the relaxed job. They're sitting in an office you know, reading their Bible all day. Nope. I'm the one who's sweeping, working, doing hard labor. And during many sleepless nights, I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. When you look at me, you see someone who has gone without food, someone who has suffered and shivered in the cold, not having a place to live, not having a place to stay. Wow. Right? That's my boast, Paul says. Hey, what do you guys think of that? You know, that, and that's the kind of attitude. Uh, the reason why I'm expressing that is because that's the kind of attitude Paul has. Hey, what do you think of that? Now, I want you to see something that I find really cool in the Devo is, hey, sometimes maybe what I need to do in my life is instead of coming at people and arguing with them uh, against their arguments, maybe I just need to go with the flow with them and just go, yeah, that's cool that you want you know people to control us. Hey, yeah, that'd be great. How, I mean, we, let's have everybody control us. Wouldn't that be neat? See, when you go in that way of arguing, sometimes all of a sudden it becomes like a reality to the people that we're talking about, the folly of it. And so... You know, I used to do this all the time when um, I first came to Christ and, you know, coming from a secular atheistic perspective, an evolutionary perspective, meaning how do we get here through evolution, through natural selection, um, Darwinian evolution, if you will. Um, and then when I ga- gave my life to Jesus Christ, I would use this kind of argument argument on people. So when they would, when we would talk about evolution, I would say, yeah, okay, you evolved, you know, so, you know, great. So you're evolving now. So you didn't know much back then, but now you know more. And you probably really don't know much now because we're still evolving, right? And really nothing really mattered in moral ways, right? When you were, you know, some kind of ape or even before that, when you were some kind of paramecium, you know, amoeba, right? Nothing really mattered with morality. So, hey, nothing matters today too, right? You know, and you kind of roll with that argument. You kind of go with it. You, you go to the extreme of it. Let's move in that way of arguing. And Paul does that with his boasting. And I don't know if you've ever done that with people before. And you might have. And, uh, and you might have found it interesting, you know, when you've done that. Um, but there is a purpose for it, right? We want people to understand, right, the direction that they're going in in life. The heart should be a heart of love for people. And we use artistic languages and means to try to help them see something, to see the direction that they're going in, that there's a better direction, that there's a better thing uh, that regulates us as human beings. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul is trying to help these people. See, so I don't want you to think that he's not doing this in love. We want to do this in love, and Paul certainly is doing this in love. He's already spoken to them in the loving terms of endearment ways. So maybe this is a good thing to understand in the Devo too, is that we want to always affirm just our our love for someone, 
help them understand the gospel, what, we're, what we t- are talking about when we're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, but affirming our love for them, and then being able to use different uh, uh, ways of speaking, artistic ways of speaking, to help them understand uh, their false reasoning. And that might be uh, a great way to uh, go about our lives. You know, if you launched with this, that might be tough, right? If you launched with this kind of boasting sarcasm, this kind of uh, satire, um, it wouldn't probably work out too well. But because Paul already had a foundation of affirming his love for them and what the gospel was, and I hope you're getting that, are you in people's lives enough where you're affirming your love for them? They know you care for them. They know you have their goodness in mind, and then you can show them things. You know, so um, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, And uh, let me just read the rest of this. Okay, so he talks about being without clothes. And then he says, and then besides all, I have this daily burden and concern for all the churches. Isn't that beautiful? Paul had this wonderful concern for all the churches. Oh, what a sad burden, right? Paul says, this is my boast, is that I'm destitute, I'm in need, I've been beat. I'm, you know, these, these leaders you guys talk to, they don't, they don't have any of this. You know, they, they're up here. But, uh, you know, me, my boast is, you know, this is what my boast looks like. And then, uh, yeah, I have this burden for the church. I mean, yeah, you guys are bummed at me because I'm burdened for the body of Christ. But mm, that's where I'm at. <laughs> you know, it's super interesting. Who is weak without my feeling that weakness? Who is led astray and I do not burn with anger? Um, But if I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows I am not lying. When I was in Damascus, the governor under King Artis kept guards at the city gates to catch me, and I had to be lowered in a basket through a widow a window in the city uh, wall to escape from him. And he will go on in his boast. So um, I just read that just to know that we're going to be rolling still in the same direction um, tomorrow. And it's going to be this boasting one, right? So I hope uh, you kind of understand a little bit of what Paul's doing and what he's getting at, how he's using this really interesting artistic language to... Uh, love the Corinthian church and really win them and help them see something. And again, I I know in my life, I hope that um, I love people enough to invest in them, to spend that kind of time with them, whether it's on phone or however we do it today. Um, And then to be able to, you know, share, love the gospel enough to share the gospel with them. And, and also, be able to show them the folly of their logic. And um, so, Lord, help us to, to, to use these, these, uh, these things in our world to show the goodness of who you are and what you've done in Jesus Christ. So, hey, you guys have a great day, okay? Um, take care. Bye-bye.